Welcome to our 2022 NASA SEAS Astronaut Photography Team presentation. We would like to welcome NASA professionals, TSGC representatives, subject matter experts and mentors, all student teams, educators, and invited guests. And this is who we are. Hello, my name is Adon Nathani, and I'm a rising senior from Lane Creek High School in Houston, Texas. I aim to pursue a career in mechanical or civil and environmental engineering. Hello, my name is Adele Wilson, and I'm an incoming junior from Claremore High School in Claremore, Oklahoma. In the future, I hope to pursue a career in either engineering or biomedical science. Hi, my name is Annabelle Wang, and I am a rising senior at Westview High School in San Diego, California. In the future, I hope to pursue a career in civil engineering or architecture. Hi, my name is Rishi Iyer, and I'm a rising junior at Wooden High School in Rockford, Maryland. In the future, I aim to pursue a career in space science and chemistry. Hi, my name is Hannah Norris, and I'm an incoming senior at Prosser High School in Prosser, Washington. I aim to pursue a career in astrophysics and communication. Hi, I'm Arnok Chitari, and I'm a rising junior from Westwood High School in Austin, Texas. I would like to pursue a career in data science and urban science. For our 2022 NASA SEAS project, we explored the vast reserves of astronaut photography accumulated by NASA over the years and discovered its immense underuse. We found that these untapped images captured by astronauts for the ISS include a wide array of features on Earth. From ancient cities to uncharted reefs, our work not only showcases crucial insight into the makings of our planet, but also has the potential to serve as an educational tool that can spark interest in the minds of our youth. Our mission is to be a part of the road that is paving the way for scientists to create technologies that can help to study short and long-term environmental impacts, as well as use the data obtained to implement strategies to discover more about our planet. By sharing these images in an engaging way, we realized that we could provide a powerful medium for learning about geography, show an influential perspective on the impact of climate change, and most importantly, illustrate the importance of an underlooked role in astronaut may play. This helped provide a deeper understanding of the intricacies of space research and presents to kids that you do not need to be a scientist or an engineer to have a place in the future of space exploration. Our team came to the conclusion that creating an interactive game called Where in the World to be featured on the NASA website would be the best way to accomplish our listed goals. Using pictures taken by NASA astronauts, we created a trivia game where students can gain knowledge of important geographical features and have the unique chance to see familiar features and cities from an astronaut's point of view. As shown here, incorrect guesses elicit hints that redirect the player towards the right answer, while correct ones prompt fun facts about the location in the photograph. These responses provide further opportunities for learning and engagement and create an immersive, responsive experience. As the world urbanizes, more and more people are moving into cities. While the natural features of our world receive lots of scientific attention, we felt that cities have lacked the urgency of study that they require. A majority of the world will soon call a large city home, and astronaut photography gives us the opportunity to protect our homes. Being man-made, cities are extremely susceptible to natural disasters and the consequences of climate change. We must monitor them to the best of our ability. Rising sea levels in places such as Miami, Shanghai, and Bangkok, and extreme natural disasters caused by climate change in cities like Jakarta and Lagos are just a few of the often neglected issues that analyzing astronaut photography offers insight to. Through our analysis, we found commonalities among many cities in how they were constructed based on factors like when they were formed and how many people they were intended to support. These conclusions helped us understand cities further, the same way our players will be impacted in their understanding. Now, to take a look at our process, we first sifted through resources such as a gateway to astronaut photography to curate a collection of 30 images that best illustrated unique features such as rivers, seas, mountains, and more that surround the cities. We then found and labeled important features to aid the player in identifying the location. By utilizing Google Earth and the latitude and longitude provided with the image ID, we were able to approximate the north orientation of each image and display that as well to make it easier to comprehend each photo. After that, we researched the city to create hints and to offer fun did you knows about each correct answer. The hints are supposed to narrow down the choices, but not completely give away the answer. 
The Did You Knows would be a fun, memorable fact about the city's history and landmarks to further educate the learner about it. After collecting all the facets needed for each slide, we'd link and the choices together in Google Slides and transfer our project to external softwares to incorporate food animations and transitions. In the process of curating images, we face a unique issue of uniformity among cities. While natural features are sporadic and therefore often distinguishable, cities are man-made and many present similar layouts and structures. This forced us to look far and wide to ensure that each included city served a purpose and gave some sort of unique insight on different fundamentals of cities. To combat our issue of uniformity, we developed a process to identify rivers, landmarks, and other important features that can differentiate cities from one another. We sifted through dozens of images to make a collection that best represented the aspects we wanted to showcase in our game. This helped us clearly define important parts of an image and aided us in creating labels. All in all, we wanted to select a topic that was widely accessible yet often underlooked. This presented its own set of challenges that we had to work together to overcome. Here is an example of one of the questions. As you can see on the left, the image is here with the label of a river. This label provides a clue regarding the main language in the country and also the terrain. The north orientation allows the user to get an idea of where they are to help identify key features. Also, by using the luminosity of the city lights in the night, you can tell how developed and how large it is. On the right, we have three answer choices to choose from. Below the choices is a button that shows two hints. These hints can help you eliminate answer choices. By using the hints, labels, features, and north orientation, the player can find the answer and also learn a fun fact about the city. Using process of elimination, Rio de la Plata is in Spanish, so we can eliminate Canada. Miami could still be possible, but the hints narrow the answer down to Buenos Aires. Here, we included the daytime photo. It can be a little harder to identify how large or developed it is, but there's a major river that runs straight through it. We can identify this river and use a language to help us. Along with that, the hint says warmer climate, so we can conclude that this is Bangkok. By using features to run the quiz, players will be able to learn something and also have some fun. Hannah and I decided to explore Impact Painter specifically because we felt this type of geographical feature is often overlooked. We frequently associate craters with planets or extraterrestrial objects that lack the protective atmosphere we have here on Earth. For this reason, we wanted to explore significant craters on our planet. Despite serving as crucial windows into our planet's past and future, craters frequently go unnoticed by the public. Impact events are a fundamental part of our planet's history, influencing climate and life forms. Through studies on impact craters, we can determine the age of sediment as well as extraterrestrial materials. The work we had to do wasn't difficult necessarily, but certainly time consuming. It took a while to sort through the photo databases to select the best images, gather all the information we needed for our hints and did you knows, and assemble everything into our presentations. The primary database we used to find images was NASA's Gateway to Astronaut Photography. We sorted through the crater photos to find unique and interesting images that would appeal to our intended audience. We also conducted research on the craters themselves noting down their location, age, and other interesting facts unique to each impact. Using this information, we curated two hints per image that learners could use to help them pinpoint the location of said image. We also searched for information on the crater that was particularly interesting to keep students engaged when they answer a question correctly. These were used as our did you know facts. We assembled the initial drafts of our activities in slides using the hyperlink feature to make the questions interactive. The linking process was quite time consuming as each of us had 70 plus slides to weave together and each slide was unique. One of the challenges we faced was learning how to identify the key features of the photographs we were using so we could match them to the models we found on Google Earth and identify which direction was north. Depending on how eroded the crater is or how any lakes surrounding it have shrunk or grown over time, matching up the key features could prove quite challenging at times. Some craters have been better studied than others, meaning that it was extremely difficult to find information about some of the craters we included, but we persevered and found the data we needed. Some of my favorite craters include the Loner Crater and Oasis Crater. Each of these impact craters are unique depending on the size, shape, speed, and age of the crater. Not only do these factors influence the impact crater formed, but the contents of the surrounding sediment also play a role in the remnants of the impact crater we see today. With the Lonar Crater, I was most drawn to the nearly perfect circular shape of the impact site, as well as the depth that can be seen from as far as space. The meteorite impact that created this crater is estimated to have occurred from 35,000 to 50,000 years ago, which is relatively recent when it comes to the history of our planet. 
This is one of the reasons why the crater seems so well defined. My favorite of the images I used for my project is Glixen Crater in Australia, also known as the Shoemaker Crater. I chose my craters because I found their photos to be unique and eye-catching, especially Glixen Crater. Because it's so heavily eroded, it doesn't resemble your typical crater. Its photo reminded me of an abstract painting when I first saw it, and I find it really cool that a structure like it can exist on Earth. Since your average person probably isn't going to be familiar with craters, we decided our hints should focus more on the surrounding region. Clues that people could use to eliminate one or more of the answers with a little knowledge of geography. Many of our did you knows are facts we found interesting, but ultimately too obscure to serve as a viable hint. I hope students will come away from our Where in the World projects with a more extensive knowledge of Earth's craters, as well as a few more trivia facts under their belts. Our world today is plagued with environmental degradation that is occurring at an ever-growing frequency. Nearly every month on the news, we are not only exposed to the intensity of overfishing in coral reefs, but also the number of coral habitats destroyed by ocean acidification. As of today, over 200 coral species are threatened with extinction. But why? Do coral reefs really play a significant role in our lives? Accordingly, I've always been intrigued at how studying the coastlines can help us to forecast weather patterns, analyze human environment interaction, and quantify the short and long-term impacts of man-made events. Coral reefs are known to be one of the most diverse habitats in the world and play a major factor in helping our environment. From protecting coastlines from dangerous storms to maintaining marine ecosystems and providing a habitat for coastal fisheries, coral reefs live up to their name as a rainforest of the seas. Hence, we chose coral reefs to not only educate our audience on what role these ocean habitats play, but also to inform our audience that astronaut photography can be the best place to start in our search for answers. With growing ocean acidification, rising sea temperatures, and overfishing, coastal reefs will see major changes in the coming decades, unless we act now to preserve our environment. Through astronaut photography, we are able to not only identify potential hazards to coral reefs not seen elsewhere, but also find trends to how reefs all around the world are impacted uniquely to human behaviors. Ultimately, it is important to research and delve deep and to astronaut photos of coral reefs to study the effects that climate change has on these beautiful coastal habitats. Canyons are very unique and hold more information than what meets the eye. Canyons are carved by elements over millions of years and are usually found along mountain ranges, rivers, and coastlines. It is important to analyze photos about canyons because they can determine the age of geographical locations, signs of erosion, and how the surrounding environment is susceptible to change over time. Therefore, my teammate and I decided to pick canyons and reefs as our subtopics so we could highlight the useful qualities they hold to observe now and prepare for the future. One challenge that my partner and I faced was finding the most practical software to create our interactive game. We decided on using PowerPoint and Canva because it allowed us to manage our time between researching and assembling the interactive. Another challenge was making sure that our interactive was appealing to K-12 students. We overcame this by brainstorming ways to make it more enjoyable and decided on adding lively colors, graphics, and useful hints. After seeing our extensive project guidelines, we took to planning and sketching a template of our PowerPoint with respect to our subtopics. Through collaborating and bouncing ideas off of each other, we were able to effectively manage our time to create a presentation that encompasses multiple perspectives. From looking at previous research to thinking in the minds of our audience, we took steps to add depth and a pleasant aesthetic to our project. After going through a multitude of astronaut photographs, we narrowed our findings and picked 30 photos we concluded best showed not only significant geological features, but also photos that thoroughly emphasize multiple variables so we can share the potential of astronaut photography. Also, through our use of Google Earth, we are able to indicate to our audience the north direction on our photos for a better overall analysis of the images. Overall, through the experimental design process, we started with a solid goal in mind, listened to each other's feedback, and approached problems with an open mind, ready to tackle issues one step at a time. Now I'm going to give you a brief walkthrough of the Where in the World Interactive for Canyons. Let's look at the first question. With this photo, the first thing that we can notice are a lot of white fluffy areas dispersed around the photo. This indicates that this canyon is located in a mountainous area and the mountains have snow on top. Let's look at the hints. 
The first hint is that this canyon is located in South Asia, and the second hint is that this is an ancient canyon buried along the Yarlung Sangpo River in South Tibet. With these two hints, we can rule out the coastal canyons because those are located in Africa, not South Asia. We can also rule out the Sharan Canyon because it is located on the Sharan River. That leads us with our correct answer, the Himalaya Canyons. Did you know, after the geologists and researchers discovered the ancient canyon, they dated the Yarlung Sangpo River back to about 3 million years ago prior to the Himalayas. Let's look at one more question. With this photo here, we can see on the left-hand side that there were clouds in the atmosphere when the astronaut took the shot. In the middle right, we can also see the squiggly line that indicates that this canyon is located on the river. And let's look at the hints. The first hint says that this canyon is located on the border of two U.S. states, and the second hint says that it is on the Green River. Knowing these two things, we can automatically rule out Canyon St. Anne and the Alto Taroni Volcano Canyons because neither of those canyons are in the United States. That leads us with the Flaming Gorge as our answer. Did you know the Flaming Gorge got its name from an expedition in 1869 that explored the Green and Colorado Rivers? Major John Wesley Powell and his crew thought the gorge looked like it was on fire from a distance. Thank you for going through that walkthrough with me. Now let's look at an example of a where in the world question with coral reefs as a subtopic. The idea behind these questions is to make the audience not only engaged, but also to make the question difficult so the player has to delve deep into the photo and interpret different landforms. As shown here, we see that there is a bright, pristine lagoon near the Pacific Ocean with a kangaroo-rich environment, according to the hint, which allows us to come to the conclusion that this reef is located in Australia. Through the did you know fact provided after each correct question, the audience is educated with fun facts about the photo's location. Overall, this interactive is a colorful way to better people's data interpreting and visual analyzation skills. Through the gamification of information about these geographical features, we hope to capture the attention of our youth and spark interest in space and STEM careers. We are currently in the process of converting our interactive slides to a medium known as Storyline 360, where we will be able to integrate our activities into the NASA website to reach a broader audience. Throughout our educational experience, we were rarely exposed to the plethora of NASA resources open to the public. By creating this interactive game, we want to educate and make these resources more accessible for the next generation. Throughout my NASA SEAS experience, I found my favorite parts were the activities that encouraged teamwork and innovation. Through these challenges, I was able to form connections with my peers while learning about their unique backgrounds and perspectives. The SEAS internship also showed me how much variety can be found in STEM careers and NASA specifically. In the future, I plan to continue employing the skills I have developed through this experience in my day-to-day -day life. What I enjoyed most about being a NASA SEAS intern was getting to connect with my team. I haven't had any STEM experiences as immersive as this in a long time, and it was exciting being surrounded by people with a shared interest in science. This internship was invaluable in clearing up some of my uncertainties about what it means to work in STEM. Being a part of the NASA SEAS internship didn't make me feel more secure or more sure about what I want to do in my future. Rather, it opened new doors for me that I hadn't even realized existed previously. The opportunities I learned of during this internship and the people I connected with created experiences I will remember for a lifetime, and ones that will no doubt have a positive, permanent impact on my life. The best part about SEAS was not only the relationships I built with people here, but also the opportunities given to me. I learned more about myself and what I want to do with my future. Partaking in the NASA SEAS program broadened my overall perspective of STEM. Through building parachute vehicles to controlling and programming speed bots with my team, I was able to engage and collaborate to solve fun and intricate problems to create innovative solutions. Overall, this experience has not only given me insight into the intricacies of global issues and the countless avenues for innovation, but also the mediums through which I can develop viable solutions. Because of SEAS, I'm enthused to tackle challenges, seek different perspectives, think critically, and bring my ideas to life. My favorite parts about being a NASA SEAS intern were connecting with new people, learning about the various professions that NASA has to offer, gaining knowledge for my future, and making so many memories. I encourage anyone who enjoys STEM to look into this internship. It is an amazing opportunity. We would like to dedicate our work to our mentor, chaperone, and the SEAS staff. We appreciate all the time and effort you put in for us to succeed. These two weeks have been an incredible opportunity, and we couldn't have done it without you all. 
Thank you to UT Austin for hosting us and providing accommodations. Also, thank you to the Center for Space Research for providing us with cutting edge facilities. And finally, a thank you to NASA, SEAS, and the Texas Space Grant Consortium.